A small engine with a tall funnel stood sad and alone in the shadowy siding. His driver was huddled in the cab, keeping him company. Excuse me, said Rusty. Do you like bluebells? The engine looked startled. Yes, uh, bluebells are beautiful. Everyone worked fast. It was difficult to set the fire, but soon it was glowing hot and Stepney had a good head of steam. Rusty's engineer agreed to be Stepney's fireman. So off they set. Where is he going? They hissed. Just down the line, replied Rusty. And they chuffered quickly away. We've done it, whispered Rusty. We're over the border and back on our own railway. Mission accomplished. When Rusty and the engine arrived in the valley, a big welcome awaited them. His driver was delighted. And my friend Rusty. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Rusty. Now the little engine is as happy as can be and helps all the passengers who visit at Bluebell time. His name is Stepney, but everyone calls him the Bluebell Engine. Stepney was puffing steadily along his line. It isn't very long, and that made him feel a little sad. Later he saw Rusty. The little diesel had helped save Stepney from scrap. Everyone's been so kind, but my railway is so short, and I do miss a good long run. I'm sure he'll understand. Stepney soon discovered that indeed he did. That evening he had exciting news to visit the other engines on his railway. A really long run to get there. Oh, thank you, sighed Stepney. They set off next morning. Stepney puffed proudly through the junction. Then Stepney set off to help Duck shunt coaches in the yard. And they worked happily together all afternoon. At last, Thomas arrived. It's time for my last branch line train. Mustn't be late. He was hardly out of sight when the engines heard shouting at the station, a familiar puffing sound. There was Stepney with his headlamp swaying and whistle blowing. He gathered speed and disappeared. It's a disgrace. I'm sorry, said Stepney. I was a special. An important passenger arrived just as you left. He ordered a special train and Duck let me take it. We had a splendid run, but... Uh... Exactly, said Stepney. You're such an expert. anymore, And began telling Stepney all about his branch line. Stepney, the Bluebell engine, was busy talking to the other engines. It was his first visit to their railway, and he was having a splendid time. You are very lucky engines, he said. Your line has got everything. It's long enough to give you a good run, and you have plenty of passengers. Then you have a quarry and a mine, so you need plenty of cars. Cars are fun. I miss them on our line. You're welcome to take some of mine, he said. But you'd better ask driver first. Two engines set off. Stepney took the cars to the harbor. Then he picked up a load of empty ones and started back. Good, said his driver. We can watch the game. Then there was trouble. The batsman hit the ball, but neither driver nor fireman heard it. But Stepney didn't hear them. Come along, come along, he puffed to the car. Stepney wasn't hurrying. Caroline soon came up behind. Toot, toot, she wailed. But Stepney was still too far away for his driver and fireman to see or hear properly. If those jokers want a race, said the driver, they can have one. Faster, Stepney, faster. Stepney was already there when Caroline cluttered in. We need our ball back, cried the players, and explained everything. Soon they had rolled Caroline onto a flat car with a brake van coupled behind, and he pulled the train back to the playing field. 
everyone enjoyed watching the game. She doesn't think trains silly now. They wear and tear on a poor car's wheel. Stepney's visit to Sir Topham Hatt's railway was coming to an end, said Sir Topham Hatt. Then he turned his attention to all the other engines. Their chance came sooner than expected. The diesel was per. Now I'll show you something. Then it happened. <laughs> Shaking and spluttering, the diesel stopped. Suck it through your air intake. You'll have to take it, Doc. Thank you, sir, cried Stepney. I'd like a good long run on my last day. The engines were soon ready. Good luck. Don't worry, smiled Stepney. We'll get there and be early, too. Now for a sprint, puffed Stepney. I'm ready when you are, replied Duck. Soon they were whizzing through Edward Station. They charged at Gordon's Hill beyond. They felt the drag of the heavy coaches here. It was hard work. At last they were running smoothly along the line toward the big station. Hello, you're early, said... James says he's sick as boiler sludge and sulking in the shed. Serves him right for saying we're out of date. And Gordon chortled away, came to say goodbye to Stepney. Come back, and you are always welcome on my Bluebell Railway, too, replied Stepney. Then he puffed away. And what about... Stepney, the Bluebell engine, works closely with his friend Rusty. One day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him, so I want you to help Toby and Mavis in the quarry. Oh, thank you, sir, said Stepney. Shall I be away long? It is easy to get lost. Stepney soon arrived at the quarry. Are these my cars? asked Stepney. The more, the merrier. Stepney was really enjoying himself. The dustier he became, the harder he worked. Mavis and Toby were impressed. Then the foreman spoke to his driver. But he should have asked Sir Topham Hatt first. Night came. Be careful, Stepney, advised Toby. I will, and thank you for a lovely day. I do hope I can come back again. Thank you for the warning. And with that, Stepney puffed away. Stepney arrived on time and made the delivery of rocks and stones for the workmen. Then he set off for home. That's when the trouble began. The fog came down. Mavis was right. Suddenly everything does look spooky. There's a signal box, called his driver. Someone must have been expecting us. But they weren't. But Stepney didn't realize this. Home, here we come! Then they approached an unknown area. The driver made a decision. It's best if we rest here until the fog clears. What are those strange sounds? wondered Stepney. Then the fog slowly lifted. Oh no! We're in the scrapyards! His driver and fireman went for help. Stepney was all alone. Got you this time, Stepney. You'll make very fine scrap indeed. The diesels took him to the large smelter shed. Stepney looked up. Above him was a huge grabber. This engine's not for scrapping. The grabber wasn't listening. But just as it was about to grab hold of him, it stopped. Yes, sir, but I have learned something. 
There's no place like home. Blue bells forever. In the summertime, the Branch Line Station Masters enjoy a friend too. Duck gazed at it for so long, he ran into the back of Stepney. Edward enjoyed working with Stepney. It was great fun delivering passengers to stations in the beautiful countryside. One morning, Edward was in a hurry. He didn't even stop to say hello to Stepney. Rusty repairs the railway that winds through the mountains on the... Rosie passed Stepney in a siding. Stepney was waiting to puff onto the main line. Stepney blew his whistle loudly. Oh my! But Stepney was whistling because the freight car of Sugar was now rolling towards him. Stepney was covered in pink sugar from funnel to footplate. Blue bells forever. <laughs> <laughs> 